Your buddy's got you covered. We're just like other people. We love to sing, we love to dance, we admire beautiful women. We're human, and sometimes very human. Good morning, everyone. Another weekend upon us, another opportunity to go camping. I'm here at Texas Avid Outdoor Expo down in Llano, Texas, hanging out with my buddies Mike and Mike. We just wrapped up, a, what has it been, three days? Three days. Three day adventure, just kind of checking out all the vendors, checking out Off Grid. They actually had a station here with their trailer set up. And uh, just wanted to have a casual conversation about these trailers because uh, my buddy Mike here is actually looking to buy one. So, Mike, tell me a little bit about your interest in these trailers and kind of what got you sparked on this one specifically. Well, it's kind of the evolution of camping. I started out with a small ground tent and then I had a rooftop tent. But, you know, the rooftop tent takes a significant time to set up or the ground tent. And there's always the inclement weather issue is yep. you, you get to camp and it's wet and it's raining or you got to break camp and you, you just don't want to be out there in the rain trying to set up a tent and all that. So when I started seeing these hard-sided off-road type trailers, not the RVs, because you could have always gotten a, a larger off-road trail, I mean right. a larger RV trailer, I was like, yeah, this is exactly the problem I'm trying to solve. I can pull into camp and it's pouring rain. I just go from the driver's seat to the back and to deal with it in the morning when the rain has stopped or exactly. something like that. Uh, the other great thing is you can be traveling and you start getting tired 
you just pull in at the first rest stop same thing you, you can be asleep in five minutes where before you know you could do that but then you have to like recline your car car seat and try you're not going to sleep very yeah. well doing that so or find a way to stealth uh, camp right which yeah, you know stealth camp yeah and then you still yeah I'm, I'm trying to you know i don't want people seeing me sleeping right in my front seat so right. it's, you know i got to put my sunshades and stuff and so these hard-sided small off-road hard-sided are just a solution that i'm looking for uh so what made you think that. about the expedition 2.0 specifically was there something unique about this trailer that you're like you know what above all the others i've looked at this one just has yeah. you know well I, I really just started with like a, a clean sheet of white paper and started writing down the must-have features and mm -hmm. then whatever hard side was number one and no matter how many you looked at or I looked at it was just they just didn't do it right yeah. was something about them I didn't like it it wasn't big enough it was too big some were too big you know some of them you could see they're they're getting really big now because people want to add more features in yep. and I just want a very simple thing I like the hard side but i also like no axles either so right. plenty of ground clearance uh and you know they all are coming with bigger off-road type tires so yep. that was real important i think the hard side and and having the space on the inside and the efficient use of the space mm -hmm. was real important yeah i know uh when i was and I, i've mentioned this on previous videos but when i was looking around at the trailers like you mentioned you can get them bigger more options things like that but a lot of people don't consider the weight difference you know these things get heavy very quickly so when you consider the sweet spot for this which i think dry is about 1850 pounds very easily towable by most vehicles that are typical for off-road so i don't know if weight was a consideration for you or I, the other thing i talk about is typically the water capacity and how important that is you know there's bigger ver versions of these things that have less water capacity yeah. it just doesn't make sense to me yeah it's i'll probably have a vehicle strong enough to tow a reasonable amount but the more the more you tow the lower your gas mileage right. there's just issues so this i think I'm not sure what the total spec is, but I think the gross weight on this is like 3,500, 4,000. You can max it out to That's that. That's a yep. very yep. light load for most right. vehicles to tow. That, anyone can tow that. So that's really nice. And like you said, the other real cool features is that up front section where you can just put tons of firewood if you want. Right. You still preserve a roof, mm -hmm. you know, with, 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 with the, the slots, the racks, you know, so you can put stuff up there. You know, like some people might want to put another tent up there, but to me, that's just you can put tables and chairs and pop ups. You know, you could three or four pop ups up there if you want, and right. there's just so much ways to use that roof. That's good. Where if you have like a pop up, you know, pop up type tent, your pop up type trailer, you can't really put any weight because that's your roof going exactly. up. Exactly. Exactly. And I know for your tent. Some of the trailers they're building those hard shells that do have a pop up that can bear weight, but. I, I don't know it just seems sketchy to me you know and you're right you lose roof i mean think of all the flexibility you have with an empty roof right right now i've got my water jug up there you mentioned putting solar panels where you could actually have a you were you're talking about some ideas around that so i i think that i agree with everything you're saying and I, i'm glad that someone else sees it the same way i do i think you know more and more people are coming to that same conclusion and the big thing you know and this this is kind of generic to all most trailers is i like the idea that i can have everything packed and ready to go right someone says hey let's go camping I mean, I could probably be ready in an hour. Yeah. Just get the food in the cooler, yep. top off the water, and, and you're out the door. You don't have hours of prep running around your house looking for for whatever, this, this kitchen piece, this kitchen right. piece. Or you do have all that stuff, but you keep it in storage. You go to get it and realize it, it's not as clean as it was because, right. you know, it got dust in it or, yep. you know, something like that or whatever. So you just you just can keep that thing fully loaded and you're, you can roll anytime. So I know one of the, the things we were talking about this weekend was when it comes to these types of trailers and the amount of setup time, it's really optional. It, it depends on how far you want to go. Like you don't have to deploy the awning. You know, right. you don't have to do certain things. If you just want to show up and go from show up to, to, to drink, that's cool. You know, and then you can kind of work your way into no, setting up exactly the awning. exactly. Like at this event, yeah. you know, if you're traveling by yourself, you set up kind of what we're looking right here in the yep. video, small station. We're here with six or seven vehicles. You don't really even have to pull out your kitchen because we, we've got some pop-ups yeah. behind us. Everyone has set up their own kitchens. Right. You know, it's community kind of share and you don't have to really do this. You could have, you could be set up in just seconds with this. And yeah. just, this is a hauler. And then, but if you're by yourself, you can just set up this minimalist thing yeah. and go. So it's very flexible as to how you want to use it. So I know the other Mike and I were talking about the difference between tent camp, you know, tent camping and trailer camping. And we still want to do a video of the setup times between the two, but he made a good point. And, and Mike, I think it was what requires two people versus what requires one person, right? 
Right. Uh, because yeah. when when we first set up camp, it was uh, me and the other Mike setting up our little um, sun protector, setting up the kitchens and everything like that. And Tommy, you were over here with your trailer setting it up by yourself. Yeah. And it was just the ease of putting everything out. And, you know, it took us you know, 15, 20 minutes to get both of the sun shades up. Yeah. And in that time you turned around and you're like, I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready to count. It's really, the trailer really is a one man shop. You know, it takes one person to get it all set up to your point. You know, these pop-ups, they require two people. I mean, yeah, one person could probably do it. It'd take them twice as long, but it really is better if you have two people. So I, I think that tent camping has some challenges when it's just a solo camper if you're trying to set things up by yourself compared to something with a trailer um some some the other might <laughs> so when it comes to the features of this trailer i know that you're kind of thinking through how you want to spec things out is there anything that you want to point out on the trailer at least here on the front here that you're like yep i like the upgraded fridge you know what are your thoughts on kind of how this one well i love the idea that you can have the max the max breeze is mm -hmm. that what it's called yeah that zero breeze the, the zero breeze the yeah. zero breeze air conditioning we're here in texas I mean, you know, here it is. It's October, and we're getting we're getting some good sun on. Yeah. You know, we're, we're <laughs> copper toning down because that's how much sun it is, yep. and we're seeing some extreme temperatures. I mean, you know, last night it might have been in the fifties, mm -hmm. but during the day, you know, it's really warm, and you don't know what you're going to get at night. Are you going to go to bed at night and it's warm, and you're going to wake up right. cold? So it's nice to have the. And this is like I said, this is October. Wait till you, this opens up in Texas a couple more months that you can still be comfortable camping. You can go out. And, the big bend in July or August right and yeah it'll be 100 in, during the day and but at night you can cool your thing down to you know 70 80 yeah. degrees maybe and yeah. go uh, so so the zero really breeze, nice so you're gonna probably opt for that AC press definitely the, you do definitely it. Yeah. the zero breeze I didn't really think of that because I didn't even know that people would offer that I'm used to yeah. if, if you're gonna do it AC I'm used to the big unit yeah. that well, has to run a generator yeah. to keep going I'm not used to battery power yeah. air conditioning which is really awesome yeah that's a something I didn't realize it was out there until you got your trailer right so that's good I love the huge refrigerator you know you can get the upgrade to this one which is the dual zone mm -hmm. right now I'm running the refrigerator out of the back of my car you know I don't want to leave my car the back door open like 24 hours who knows right. raccoons will be sleeping in there at night so <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but this way I don't have to keep getting in and out of it you can just it's right there on the slider all the time ready to go and your car itself is still buttoned down right so that's another great feature so agreed I think I really like that I like the kitchen setup here everything is on this side you have the kitchen there you, you, you cook you clean you can where we're sitting from this viewpoint is where we would have our kitchen table and you could just eat and then you have you know your shower and your other station on the back side so right that's a that's a really good design also and then storage is on the on the back end so yeah. it's yeah. a really good setup you have a really good point because when I was looking at other trailers, after I got mine, and you know, I, I still see new new vendors coming online, and it's kind of silly the engineering. Like they'll have the fridge on one side and the kitchen on the other, or they'll put the fridge yeah fridge in the back, and you're so it, it became an inefficient use of time. This setup, I literally turn around, I got the fridge. I turn around, I got the sink. You know, when I'm cooking, that's the proximity of the two that I want. So that that right there, something simple like where the layout is matters. You know, and, and kind of how you're going to enjoy your trailer. Um, anything else on this side of the trailer that you wanted to point out or talk about? No, you just you, know, you can see the versatility of how, where we can put the drink station. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the fender, you know. <laughs> you know, you yeah. know, you wouldn't want to prepare meat or something on that fender, but right. you can you can store things on it, and it's got the two shelves going up and the little fan. Yep. Um, the paper towel holder, you know, clever idea. You can just put that magnetic stick and then yep. put it away when you're done. Yep. Um, really 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 good deal the other thing i liked was if you look here we see the lowe's bucket down there with the which drains the water and you know you can also hook up a hose and run that off into the woods yep. but i think the idea of the way you're doing it with the five gallon bucket it lets you track how much water you're using yep. so you know how much is left yep so that's a great you don't even have to go in and look at the leveler or anything like that you just you just see that's five gallons i've you know i've moved, I've moved two buckets i've right. got 10 gallons down and you know so that's a really really neat idea of way to use it i like yep. that too yeah 
Well, what we'll do is uh, let's uh, move around. I don't know if the, you know, we'll move around to various parts of the trailer and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about kind of some of the options and, and what has it got you interested. All right, so here we are at the back of the trailer. So is there anything that stands out for you, Mike? That What I like here was the way the wolf packs fit right in because the wolf packs are very common amongst uh, mm -hmm. campers. Those shelves are adjustable. So if your wolf pack had the larger lid, you just move that thing up and then that right. would fit also. That's actually a lot of storage. Um, there's some other things that I like is this bottom here where it slants you know I can easily see making a mod on that on my own so I could put a pair of max tracks there yeah and put all that point. there you know it's really just four bolts to, to do there with you know a long just a long head you could put right. two of them in it would have little impact on anything else so that would be a great option and maybe that's even an option to feed back to off-grid that all they have to do is put four studs there yeah and you can put your max tracks there so yeah but this is a great amount of storage so I think uh, you know and you can configure that shelves you, we've got to set up there with one two three shelves but you can do two shelves with four of the wolf packs on there yep. and then some space on the side there where you can put your other things so yeah and those shelves are completely removable too yeah, so if you want to get rid of one side you can get rid of one whole side if you have yeah. some other thing like I have a camp chef oven you know, you could probably That's take those two point. shelves out and push the whole thing right into that yeah. one side there. So, Yeah, you know, it's interesting. When we were looking at some of the trailers here, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Off-Grid had their presence. And what was interesting was to see how they've set it up with soft bags. So the front runner soft bags. So I think I'm actually going to ultimately swap out my hard, hard shell ones for the soft bags. Uh, one of the, just, you know, one of the challenges I have is in order to get into that front runner box, you got to take it completely out or at least leave the lid off if you want to mm -hmm. just reach in and get some stuff. Yeah. I think the soft bag would give a little bit more flexibility in getting stuff without having to pull the whole thing out. But yeah. And if you look there at the bottom, you, you got the two inch receiver hitch. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking about buying a bike. So, you know, I can't put the bike on the back of my car because the right. car is towing this, but I can still put a, a small receiver extension on that and have my bike right off the back exactly. of this without any issue. So yep. that would work real well. More versatility. Now we didn't talk about the awning, but are you considering the 270 or are you just considering a pullout? What would be your I preference? I hadn't considered it at all. I have the ARB awning and I thought I would just bolt the ARB awning up and be mm -hmm. happy. When I saw how fast you deployed this and now I see how it goes all the way around yep. with such ease, I'm gonna probably just leave the ARB on the car yeah. and then have this here and then I actually could have both. So then my, my up in front, I could open up the awning for that, or I would just use this the way right. it is. So I'm definitely going to get the 270 awning now that I see how, now it you see how it's deployed. Yep, yep, and definitely. It's hard to see, but you have these, you know, the light strip oh, right yeah. up here yeah. all the way around. Yep. So you can have some, you know, scene lighting, very simple, USB yep. powered. You just plug it in and it goes and just using little simple binder clips to to secure it so it's not permanently there exactly you know just just great ingenuity on how to make a little mod well, we had that yeah. out last night it went great yeah and it you know it, it adds a little bit of ambient light so you're not always compelled to turn on all the lights on the trailer right. that, are, that are brighter than this so you get just enough ambient light to be able to see your way to around see, but, see where you're walking yeah not bump into stuff yep. and it's and just it, just kind of you know this is a big campsite and you know it's kind of neat to have some scene lighting on your camp yeah to, to just show it as to just having you know one little campfire right light so, yeah and, you, and I, and the I other one might, of the yeah. other things too tommy is like if you look here on the door you see a little bit of dust um we're kind of close to a road mm -hmm. and trucks have been going by back and forth i'm getting dust inside my tent mm -hmm. but to your point you know you're up here above the ground there's no dust coming in where you're sleeping yep and then also there's a big hive of velvet ants behind oh, you oh yes yes and you don't have to worry about you know i don't you know don't have any food in your tent or anything like that i don't have to worry about You're potential snake snakes. holes the right. ants i mean it, there's just so many other re that many is, reasons you know that is another big thing i didn't bring up in the very beginning but you have a sealed sleeping compartment yes. yep. whether it's even if it's not raining you know you can get dusted yep we well you, you can't get dusted but the ground camper or the tent camper can get yep. dusted that's the other thing about the build quality is all of these seals my understanding is they're all auto seals so they're designed to be airtight when you've got everything buttoned up yeah. and that's to keep the dust out because yeah, we do we do a lot of camping in texas not in not in the forests right of right that. so there's a lot of dirt roads, roads and there's a lot of yep. wind yep. texas is very windy you know you may not think it's windy but a, you know a guy could be half a mile away and yeah. he could kick up a bit of dust that it would carry and over time you know two three days of camping you'll, you'll have a, sl a slight layer of dust if you're right if you're like that right now we haven't had rain in a long time so the, the you know the ground is very dry and very uh very dusty Powdery. my shoes my yeah. black shoes are you know kind of like yeah sand colored now 
Yeah, I know. Last night I took my shoes off. <clears throat> Even though I was wearing shoes and socks, my toes are still just completely <laughs> dirty. Yeah. I'm like, how did that happen? But yeah. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and move around to the, uh, to, the, to the other side of the trailer and again continue talking about some of the feature sets. All right, so we're on the other side now where we typically have the um, shower enclosure and the hot water heater and all that good stuff. So tell me a little bit about this, Mike. What, what are your thoughts on the way this is set up with the shower and everything? Well, the shower is nice because you, you, you keep the shower, you know, in your toilet or whatever you, however you set it up on this side, not on your food prep side, not right. on your hangout side. You, you're on the other side and you got a group of four people and you know you got to take care of business yep you just walk around you know it, it just, you get some privacy yeah you know the other thing with the hard cell hard shell here is you get doors on both sides right so you can come and go from both sides yeah however you want you have the access panel right here for your batteries and switches right. things like that very simple to to get to yep you know it's right there you know yeah. if you need to charge your battery up pull it out fix it spare extension cords you can put parts in there another shelf yep you know i have a goal zero i could throw another goal zero right on top of that shelf and, and have you know now three batteries effectively right. running everything or you know whatever i want to do or you have a car charger yep. a booster system jumper cables you can put all that right there you can get a lot of stuff out of your car yep. and into your trailer you know it's, it's 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 interesting you mentioned the simplicity of just having double doors because one of the things that i've taken great advantage of is you think about it you take a shower at night you don't have to go all the way around the trailer. You, you around, literally just come right. out of the shower and boom, right. go right into right. your cabin. Same so thing. If you yeah. have to go to the bathroom, you just pop out this side of the door. Yep. You take care of business and you pop right back in. Exactly. So exactly. it's nice to have those choices like that. I think that's a good design. Yeah. Really good design. Excellent. And then finally, the front end. I mean, you know, obviously there's not a whole lot going on here, but you know, I did up opt for the upgraded. Uh, uh, whatever that is, jack. And then obviously I got the spare. You know, when I have a spare just in case. Um, max coupler hitch. I don't know if any of that interests you. Like, were you looking at any of this? Like, you know, that's a beefy jack. I definitely want that. Well, or... you don't think about it when you're buying it, but when you see it, like right now, we're not on a perfectly level surface. Right. But with that jack, you can level it out very, very quickly and very easily. Right. You see, you're disconnected, but you're yep. not, you haven't really moved your vehicle right. too far. So it'll take you a couple seconds just to back that back on yep. and re hook up. You have to have the spare. Yep. You can still use, you know, everyone has like front packs, the wolf packs, everyone has a trash route. Yeah. <laughs> so you can still mount that on your tire. Yep. And it's a pretty big thing there. So yeah. It, uh, it's just a good way to use the space right there. And from this view, you know, you have the 23 0. Yep. The you box. know, that's a huge box yep. that just fits right inside that slot that, yep. for even more storage. So that was almost like it was perfectly made for this wood box. I mean, when I set it in there, it's just a great fit. You know, you mentioned the leveling aspect. And one of the things that I've learned is, you're right, leveling up and down, the jack is perfect for that. And really, I only bring a single rear tire leveler because honestly, my, my trailer is gonna be like this or it's gonna be like this. And so yeah. putting one will help me level off the other side and it gets where I need to be. Um, the max coupler hitch, some people have asked in previous videos why I keep the chains connected and don't really move the vehicle away. There's two reasons for that. One is, you know, it's, it's better to be closer so that it takes less time to hook back up and get out of here. But invariably when I show up at camp, depending on how much I've been drinking, when I disconnect this bad boy, I often forget I need to put the chocks in. So this thing immediately starts to roll back on me. Roll back. So having the yeah. chains keeps it latched to the yeah. forerunner and I don't have to worry about rolling away from it. Well, me, and but. even if you know, even if you didn't have it that way, if it's disconnected and the only thing holding it is chocks and you're in a camp, yeah. you know, who knows what kind of movement there could be or you know, we've we've been here, we've had some dogs just pass through. Yeah. You know, hey, dog sees sees a piece of plastic like that with a rope attached to it that's a play toy so <laughs> exactly he grabs it and goes exactly and of course you have the two connections right here yep. easy to find you don't have to open yep. doors to get to them There's right the power and the yep. solar input yeah you know, it's all in one those place logical. are really well waterproof so yep. you're good on that when it's not in use yep now i went with go. the uh the optional canada proof 180 watt solar panel that it is something that they sell as an option with the trailer would you be getting something like that or do Absolutely. you already have a that was enabled? another item where i really didn't think i needed it but now seeing how you're using it yeah i understand that i can keep i can trickle out those batteries yeah. and just keep them charged the whole time right so uh, yeah. yeah i'm definitely going to do the solar panels also you know i see you you've got a video there how big they are so yep. they're not obtrusive we have them on the roof so that we don't have a step on a, them at night <laughs> we have a big yeah, we have a big group of people here so we don't want strangers coming into camp and not realizing we're running cables you know we might yeah. know where they are but they may not see so we just get it up off the ground right and that's that it allows me to get kind of above the tree line a little bit too with it so i'm not yeah. you know once the shade starts in the in the, the evenings 
it doesn't immediately block out what's on the ground. You know, I've got something yeah. a little bit higher. Well, that's awesome. So, any any final thoughts? I mean, I know uh, you know you, you were talking about doing some specking, you know, this coming week, and maybe even putting in an order here pretty quick. Uh, is that still kind of your yeah? Your well, as process? you said, you know, earlier, the, the distributor for the Southwest is here. Mm -hmm. Answered any other questions I had. Walked me through the process. So, you know, I don't. Uh, I'm not going to place the order on my cell phone out here in the no, wilderness. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, tonight, Sunday night, when I get home or Monday, I'm placing my order. Excellent. And, and that's uh, Base Camp Adventure. Is that the Base name? Camp Provisions? Base Camp Provisions. Provisions. Okay. Out of San Antonio okay. is a distributor. JP is JP is, a, is his name. Amazing Great. guy. That guy is. He is money. If you've never met him, uh, again, knowing you know, like like Mike mentioned, we now have a San Antonio distributor for these things, which means for people that are looking at a trailer, at least in Texas, it, you don't have to order direct. They do have an inventory of these trailers. They can help you spec these things out. Um, it saves you on shipping costs because you can either go pick it up in San Antonio or have it you know delivered to you somewhere in Texas. So I think Mike's going to get a much better deal on the numbers than I did because <laughs> we now yeah. have you know distributor that can get these things in. Yeah, whereas... that saves a lot of money on the transportation when they can just sh and mass ship them out to Agreed. the distributor yep. and check it out. But you know he brought all four units. He brought the expedition the switchback the Pando, and the Pando. Yep. And then both of the switchbacks. Yep. Are... R and the S. Yep. So you got to see the whole lineup and how it worked and was configured. That was really really nice. He had a great setup there. Right. So and then he actually has his own expedition. Yep. His personal one. This is what he uses. So then, you, you know, you see the showroom model and then you see the way he really uses it. Yep. We're here with how you really use it. So I mean, yeah. that's about as good as it gets. Right. Right. So if you're still on the fence, people, about getting one of these things, you might want to reconsider. Um, one of the, again, we talk about the distributor down in San Antonio. One of the advantages when we were talking to JP about, you know, the experience of ordering and how long it would take, you know, my experience, and, and for those of you that bought direct, know that you put in your order and then six months later you get your trailer. I mean, that was kind of the lead time that was required. When we talked to JP about the lead time, he said it's literally 90 days. Like you put in your order a couple of weeks, you know, they, they work with you to make sure that they've confirmed all your options. And then within 90 days, you get your trailer. Right. So literally, they've cut it in half on the timing. And if if what you want, he has in stock, because now he carries inventory, yeah, get it right off you the can lot. have it in a couple of weeks. Yep. Just give him a week to prep it and check it out for you, and right. you've, you've got it. Yeah. So, so it's made it even easier. Now people run out of excuses not to get one of these things. So, um, you know, again, if you're, if you're on the fence about these and you live in Texas, uh, reach out in the comments. I'll, I'll try, to, try to put uh, JP's contact information from Basecamp uh, within the description field so that if you're curious you can reach out to him again very personable everybody that seems to work with off-grid is, is amazing even their ambassadors they're just some of the nicest people that are there to help you and answer your questions even if they're negative reviews on these trailers they want to hear that they want to hear the feedback on what do you like what do you not like where do you have problems because they're in the constant state of evolution of trying to improve these things to meet the demands of the public so yeah JP brought that home yesterday it's if you know you're not nitpicking if you're complaining right they can't fix it if no one tells if no them. one tells them yeah they're, they're, it's all based on data right the more people that submit warranty claims the more they're going to make a permanent fix instead of these one-offs so yeah. Uh, yeah totally agree uh other mike any parting thoughts i know you've been kind of quiet uh what are your thoughts on this are you uh looking to get one of these eventually or um i I think I like to punish myself, Tom. <laughs> you want to remain on the ground. You want to, you know, yeah, okay. Well, we got to have one, right? We got to be able to continue measure. All right, this is what we have. Okay, this is why we don't ground ten anymore. Because yeah, no. But, but I think also we, we've we've had that discussion already about just the setup time, and yeah. also to the other Mike's point about when you're getting ready to camp, you run around the house trying to find gear. Yep. You come out, you realize you left something behind. This is just a much more efficient way to be able to come out to camp. You know what you have; it's readily accessible. And if it's a nice weekend, yep. you don't have to worry about, you know, I need to go out to HEB, I need to go out to Walmart, go buy food. Yep. Here, just, you know what, let me hook up, go out, yeah. I'm ready to camp. So yeah. when we, real, real quick for everyone, when we look at the campsite that we have here, you can see it's pretty well established. We've got quite a bit of gear out here. And, and my question to, to the other mic, or mic number two, <laughs> is when you got prepared to come out here, how long did it take you to pack all your gear? Like, was it a, like, it took a day and a half? Did it take less than that? I'm, I'm just curious, the, the preparation time to get out here compared to something like this. Like, you know, we always talk about all you need is food and water and you're good to go, right? But I know tent camping requires a lot more logistics, like making sure you got the right awnings and the chairs and the camp stoves. I mean, so so for, for this time, it only took me about four hours to get ready. Okay, it's about half a day. <laughs> but that's excluding also the time that I had to run to the grocery store to get right. food and everything for this weekend. But I came out and I found out my, my, my new tent didn't set up properly. 
Oh, so that's right. Yeah, like you that. had problems with some so, of the poles, didn't you? Yeah. And then I've also noticed that I'm missing batteries, I'm missing cables, missing solar panels. So right. that kind of packing thing, you know, luckily we have, we have such a good group, you know, it's... it's Redundancies. We yeah. always got you covered, right? If yeah. you don't have it, at least one of the, somebody else in the camp has it. We've learned. It might seem like extra to you, but it's, it's ne you know, necessary for others to have that option. So, yeah. Well, thanks guys so much for your, oh, yeah, for your, uh, your opinions, your impressions, your thoughts on this There's process. just one thing I wanted to add, because we yeah. were talking about the warranty claim process and mm -hmm. submitting it. And we're not talking about things that are constantly broken right. and require a warranty fix. We, we're talking about, boy, you could make this just a little bit better if you did this. Right. And these are like, these just improvements that you can only learn about through actual use. Right. And you, you, you just upgrade this or this or whatever. Yep. And that's it. We haven't, you know, I don't think you've had any major issue. No, not None a None that left you stranded issue. or needed a fix in the field. Right. It's just like, wow, if you did this, it would be better if we did this if we move this light to this position yep it would it would shoot out a little better light or whatever it might be so it's the warranty process isn't always break fix it's just feedback on 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 product improvement yep and to your point you know the the caps that i got for the vents you know i got one of these trailers that had those original louver vents and you know i wasn't alone a lot of people complained that we felt like that was an inefficient way for the ac to cool the system down it was struggling so they basically 3d printed a bunch of caps and sent them out to all their their, their yeah. customers free of charge right and whether you asked for it or not they were sending them out because they recognized that's an improvement everybody could benefit from so to your point mike yeah it's not always about something's broken i need it fixed it's more about you know this could be enhanced a little bit and they listen to that and you know if they can build the engineering design around it they'll come out and provide a fix i know jp mentioned that too like he said because he now has flexibility to get this inventory in he has a little bit more flexibility on the options you know as mm -hmm. far as let's make sure you get fully set up with x you know make sure everything deploys properly all the lighting works you know so having that secondary check system before you get the trailer ensures you get it exactly the way you want it with all the latest enhancements all the features uh and, and to, to kind of tie a bow on that i think the only thing that has been what I consider a major thing wasn't even off-grid's problem. It's Dometic, like the stovetop. There's a recall on those, at least for, for these units, because of potential flame hazard. But again, that's not an off-grid problem. That's somebody else. Yeah. So that's really the only thing I can see it would be an inconvenience to me is getting it in and getting the stove swapped out. But you know, it's trivial in the grand scheme of things. You're right. It, I could go without the stove. I absolutely had to for now until I get it serviced. But I'm not going to be stranded. Like you said, nothing's going to break on this thing that's going to make me worried. So... And Tom, uh, I think one more thing, uh, last night when we were cleaning up the camp, mm -hmm. you know, cleaning up after cooking and everything like that at about 12 o'clock last night, it was sure a whole lot more convenient to be able to just go out and come here to your little kitchen yeah. and have hot water right there instead of having to boil hot water, get it ready. Exactly. It's a 30 minute process. It was two yeah. minutes and we were done with dishes. Something simple as having a sink that's got running water, hot water, not just cold water, you know, it really does, um, make things easier you know you really start to appreciate the small things and how, how something so simple like a, a sink can make a difference when you're camping especially in a large group like this you know a lot of people do dry cleaning and stuff i, I got to the point where I'm like that's not sanitary so this gives us an option to make sure our stuff is clean when we put it away but yeah good call out all right guys well i definitely appreciate your time i know this video went a little bit long for everyone uh hopefully you enjoyed some of the the b-roll footage we uh tried to get creative with some of the things that we were doing this weekend just to kind of stretch out a little bit and uh Look forward to, meet, uh, forward to meeting new people as I continue to make these events like this. I'm, I'm encouraged. Like I want to go out and actually network with people, really understand the, 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 what, you know, the, the pack of people that are on the off-grid pack, so to speak, and uh, look forward to talking to you guys soon. Thank you so much. Have, hope you're having a great weekend, and uh, look forward to making the next video for you. Thanks. Thanks, guys. All right. You guys, I get, I'm sorry. Really? So this is what happens when you have a friend of yours pull the ejection handle and fall out of a seat the night before. Your buddy's got you covered. Yeah, we got you covered. We're yeah. going to tie you down, give you a seat belt, make sure it doesn't <laughs> happen again.